What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the two new upcoming packages, the physical infrastructure package, and the next stimulus package, as well as what is going on in the world today. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates, and give this video a like. It really helps out our channel. All right, lots to cover today. Let's jump right in. Okay, first up, the Biden administration and President Joe Biden has announced today that they will cancel another $500 million in student loan debt, what I would consider another mini round of a student loan debt cancellation. This is now the fourth mini round of student loan debt cancellation. Um, the first two rounds were for a total of $2.3 billion combined for people who were defrauded by their schools, their schools closed, or they had permanent disabilities. The third round was for students who uh, they paused over 1 million people's uh, student loan payments, garnishments, interest, and um, other things like that. Here is this one. As you can see here, the Biden administration today announced that it will be canceling another $500 million in student loan debt for thousands of student loan borrowers. The student loan forgiveness will be granted through the Borrower Defense to Repayment Program. The program, which was established under formal regulations and procedures under the Obama administration in 2016, provides student loan forgiveness to students who are misled, defrauded, or otherwise harmed by predatory colleges and universities, often for-profit schools. So again, another round of this $500 million. If you think you might qualify for this, here's what to do. Go to Google, type in student loan forgiveness, and uh, the second result here is studentaid.gov slash forgiveness cancellation. Uh, go to this page, which is the official student loan forgiveness page at, uh, from the government, student uh, federal student aid, and um, see on here if you qualify, and they have different loan forgiveness and discharge forms and uh, several different things. This is not yet the mass round of student loan debt forgiveness that uh, millions of Americans are waiting for. About one in six Americans have student loan debt, and President Biden has said he is willing to do at least $10,000 of student loan debt forgiveness here. Probably will happen this year. My most likely thought is it will happen after these next two packages are passed. It could be before then, but that's just my thought because I think that they're going to try to get these two packages passed and then they're going to do that through presidential executive order. Um, that will be anywhere between ten dollars and $50,000 for student loan, uh, people with student loan debt, which is about one in six adults in the United States and um, predominantly low and middle income Americans, which will help out a lot of millions of Americans. But after that, I think we're then going to see a lot of push for other types of debt forgiveness. The government can easily do an executive order as well, a presidential executive order, for other types of debt forgiveness like tax forgiveness or tax debt forgiveness, uh, even tax lien forgiveness, as well as possibly mortgage debt forgiveness. We're going to see a large movement after they have this happen, the student loan debt cancellation. We're going to see a large movement. I already know what's going to happen uh, about the other five out of six average or everyday Americans that didn't have student loan debt forgiveness, other types of debt forgiveness, such as tax debt forgiveness or mortgage debt forgiveness, the government can easily do probably through an executive order. The government actually owns the majority of loans on the back end of each uh, loan through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to government programs. Uh, we also could see other types of debt forgiveness, such as medical debt forgiveness or credit card debt forgiveness through a um, stimulus package. They're already talking about another stimulus package after this, because even when the country opens up completely and if the virus ever goes away completely, the economic recovery is still going to take several different years to do. 2008, 2009 took four to five years to recover completely. So um, we're not going to have our economy back to normal in the next 30, 60 days. We're already starting to see some other types of debt forgiveness through um, at least private organizations. A uh, medical debt charity known as RIP Medical Debts is going to wipe out $278 million of their patients' hospital bills um, was just announced yesterday. In the next stimulus package and the next infrastructure package, Democrats and President Biden want to raise taxes on what they consider the wealthy, the 1% of the uh, population, as well as corporations to pay their fair share. But this is proving to be a little bit difficult, as a even some Democrats do not want to raise taxes 
uh, in any capacity. There is multiple different ways that they can shore up tax dollars without even raising taxes. Senator Bernie Sanders says they can get $600 billion, billion, not million, uh, $600 billion every single year just by forcing pharmaceutical companies to give the United States government um, the same prescription drugs that they sell to other countries for the same price. That alone could save us $600 billion, as well as uh, the IRS Commissioner Charles Reddick says that we can uh, save $1 trillion or bring in $1 trillion of revenue by enforcing all the tax money that is owed to the IRS that they currently are not able to collect. So President Biden actually wants to bring in 87,000 more jobs to the IRS to help enforcement and to increase the IRS um, enforcement. But they also, there's some controversial issues there, like the one main controversial one where the IRS wants to be able to have access to everybody's bank account transactions so that they can download everybody's transactions um, for every American, just basically get it directly from the banks and be able to download millions and millions of people's bank transactions, every single transaction coming in and out. This way they would know, um, or more so know, that um, you know people that buy and sell things on eBay or they sell cryptocurrency or any type of thing, the IRS would be able to figure out if you owe them taxes from capital gains or from buying and selling things, just as one example. Um, this is a very controversial issue and um, I'll keep you up to date on this. That's that's just one way that they can shore up more money uh, without raising taxes. It's kind of enforcement of the current tax laws that the IRS commissioner says is currently owed to the IRS. But there's $1 trillion that they do not collect every single year that can be used for uh, stimulus packages, Social Security raises, Medicare raises, and more. Every single year, this money would be coming in. The Fed also uh, made a major decision today. They announced that they're not going to be raising any raises until uh, the end of 2022 at the earliest, which is actually uh, very good news. Some stocks uh, traders, the stocks actually, the stock market went down a little bit because, well, they don't want to see interest <laughs> rise ever, interest rates rise ever. Um, but even the Fed has said two different things. One, this one, that they're going to uh, not raise rates until the end of next year at the earliest. And two, they've also uh, mimicked President Biden's call for more stimulus. The Fed is going to continue its stimulus programs through bond buying um, to continue cash flow in the markets, which is a form of stimulus uh, for the markets. But President Biden himself uh, when over in Europe in the G7 conference, actually uh, convinced that all the world leaders from the G7 should continue more economic stimulus measures for the end uh, until the end of the year at the bare minimum, so that both the United States and the other G7 leaders are going to continue to pass more stimulus measures, more stimulus packages until the end of the year. And uh, President Biden himself says that uh, the weak jobs report makes it clear the need for more stimulus. And that he is actually open to a fourth stimulus check, apparently, as well as he's happy to hear a range of ideas, including stimulus checks, to be included in this next stimulus package, which is exactly what Democratic lawmakers from Congress want, over 80 different Democrats in the House of Representatives. I think it's closer to 100 now. And over 28 lawmakers from the Democrat uh, Senate, which is over half of the Democrats as well, actually want not just a four stimulus check, but monthly recurring stimulus checks to be included in this next package. Even the Pfizer CEO says that he does not see the, the economy returning to normal until the end of 2022 as well. And um, th that would be another year and a half right now of economic recovery. Even that would be a lot faster than what it took in 2008, 2009, when it took four years to recover. We currently have uh, four different states this week that are cutting unemployment benefits and um, stopping, I should say, the unemployment bonus benefits to $300 per week, as well as the additional weeks that you could claim from the pandemic. Now, all 25 of these states are from Republican-run governors, and uh, you can see this headline here. Workers in 25 states brace for early unemployment shutoff, quote uh, from a person who's going to be losing their unemployment uh, benefits. I have 88 cents in my bank account. Senator Mike Crapo from uh, Idaho, a top Republican on the Senate Finance Committee, says, quote, we are hearing too many stories from business owners that there are their own initiatives are not enough to entice 
Former employees back to work because benefits from the federal government pay more. Although there is some conflicting information on this, job searches in these uh, 25, I think it's actually 26 states now that are canceling unemployment benefits early, uh, the bonus unemployment benefits. The job searches actually fell in these states and did not drastically rise like you would think would happen from people uh, when they lose their unemployment benefits. So we are seeing some mixed data on whether or not this is going to uh, have the intended effect. I'm also seeing headlines like this, even from Fox News. Remember, I cover Fox News and CNN. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. Um, forget going back to the office. People are just quitting instead. As the pandemic clouds lift, the percentage of Americans leaving employers for new opportunity is at its highest level in more than two decades, and that millions of Americans do not want to return back to the office. They would rather work from home if given the choice. There's also a big story going on right now in my home state of Ohio. If you've ever heard of Cedar Point, there's an amusement park in uh, Sandusky, Ohio, northern Ohio. Uh, it's one of the largest theme parks in the country, or at least roller coaster wise. And they've held the fastest roller coaster title in the world multiple different times. Well, um, they, along with all sorts of businesses across the country, are struggling to get people to actually go to work for anywhere close to what they used to pay, $8, 9 $10 an hour even. And uh, Cedar Point has actually just announced a uh, shocking $20 an hour wage minimum uh, for anybody working at Cedar Point because they literally had to announce that they were going to have to have days closed where they could not bring workers in. Now, here's the uh, unintended uh, problems with this here. Many employers can't find workers to staff their restaurants and retail operations around Cedar Point, forcing them to cut back hours and turn away customers or contemplate major wage increases that they say they can't in afford. This problem was exacerbated last month when Cedar Point, desperate for employees, announced it was increasing starting pay to $20 per hour, double what it was paying a year ago. I guess this is also partially in, in, in problem because apparently up to 25% of Cedar Point's workforce comes from overseas. And with COVID restrictions and everything, they're not really able to come over in nearly the amount that they were. Also, you got to think like, uh, you know, even if $20 an hour is more than your normal paying job, Cedar Point is just a summertime gig here in Ohio. Uh, they're not open year round. So like a, a normal person is not going to go quit their normal job. Well, I mean, you would think to go work at Cedar Point when it's only open for the summer months. And then after the summer months, the job goes away because it's a summertime job. You know, typically they employ like high school kids, college students, you know, students that are off for the summer can go work there very easily. Um, but it's this is the kind of the situation we're dealing with right now. People don't want to go back to work for seven, eight, even ten dollars an hour. If you make ten dollars an hour and you work 40 hours a week, that's four hundred dollars a week. And then after taxes, it's maybe $300 a week. And if you did that for all four weeks of the month, 300 times four is like maybe $1,200 in your pocket at the end of the month. But if your rent's $1,000, right, you, you barely have enough money to pay your rent, let alone food and anything else, pay for a child, uh, pay for your car payment, anything, right? So um, luckily, we have these government programs like the emergency broadband assistance where you can save $50 off your internet bill per month. Which, by the way, if you haven't applied it, you definitely should. Go to getemergencybroadband.org. Um, again, getemergencybroadband.org. You can get $50 a month off your internet service or even your phone service. $75 a month off if you're on tribal lands and a one-time discount of up to $100 for a laptop, tablet, or desktop computer. And you can um, apply right here on the website. Our community here, if you ever notice, our community is one of the warmest communities on YouTube. Uh, we, we just have so many people in the comments that are just amazing every single day, uh, bringing uplifting comments. We're a very positive channel here. Um, yeah, that emergency broadband program, we have helped thousands of people from our community alone, say $50 per month until it runs out. Um, that's a really cool, awesome benefit. The government's also uh, increasing these child tax credits. So children that are growing up in poverty, or really about 88% of all children, are going to be receiving $250 to $300 per month starting on July 15th. Um, that's already passed, but just for one year. From the, They're called the child tax credits. And that is going to start going out on July 15th, so less than a month from now. As well as we have all these different um, programs that they're currently negotiating on for the next stimulus package, including a forced stimulus check, monthly recurring stimulus checks, 
uh, Social Security increases. We have three different proposals to raise Social Security and how to pay for them, like raising Social Security taxes on the wealthy who make over $400,000 per year. Also, Medicare expansion to include hearing, dental, vision, and hearing aids completely for free with no additional Medicare costs. But And they, again, they can pay for this simply by forcing pharmaceutical companies to um, give prescription drugs to the U.S. government for the same price they sell it to other countries. So again, you know that program could be paid for also without a tax raise. The Social Security um, raise has several different type of tax um proposals on how they would raise it. Mostly it's taxing the wealthy or taxing corporations. They could use a portion of the money from Medicare as well to raise Social Security as well. So um, yeah, there's about 15 or 20 different proposals along with two years of free preschool, two years of free community college, and also home buyer, uh, first time home buyer grants of anywhere from 15 to $25,000. But you don't necessarily need to actually be a first time home buyer. You just have to, in one of the provisions, not have to have owned a home in the last three years. So we have multiple different provisions that they're looking to include either in this next stimulus package or two, or the next one after that, as Democrats are already talking about another stimulus package after that, because even if the country opens up and the virus is completely gone, the economic recovery is likely going to take years. I mean, at the end of 2022 at the earliest is what some experts are saying. That is still a year and a half from now. That would still be much, much faster than we've seen in 2008, 2009, when we had our economy crash this, much the same way. Uh, and we didn't even have to deal with the virus. We had just the economic recovery, which we have now, but we're still dealing with this, the after effects of the virus. In fact, as you can see here, there's actually a large study that nears 25%, I think it was almost 2 million people were in this study, that nearly 25% of COVID-19 uh, patients or people who had COVID-19 at one point have long lasting symptoms uh, for at least a month or more afterwards and some uh, for many, many months and still to this day, up to 25% of people who had COVID could have long lasting sy symptoms. And uh, this is why they're going to say that the economic recovery is going to still be just as long. And the, the, the virus itself could take a lot longer than a lot of people are expecting. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll keep you up to date on everything here going on with our country, as well as stimulus related, all these different stimulus programs. Remember, there's $350 billion going out to states, cities, and counties that I will update you on as well with state stimulus checks and county stimulus checks and state stimulus programs uh, coming out here as they're announced every single week. So make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. After subscribing, click the bell icon to all notifications to get reminder notifications when we go live, which is every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this video here to watch my newest stimulus check video. And this video is about a big announcement on the next stimulus check and the next stimulus package by the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.